Hi, Madeline here from Sonic Bloom. I was recently asked if I had any tutorials on how to use more complex plugins like contact libraries with push. That also goes for other MIDI controllers to basically make the parameters accessible. Since I don't and there isn't all that much online about this topic, I thought I'd cover it today. And I thought we're going to go through everything there is to do with that topic not just contact libraries and not just push to make it a complete one. If you were hoping for a tutorial on how to set up plugins in Ableton Live, if you don't actually see them yet, I'm going to link my tutorial for that. So let's start from the beginning. Any plugins that have less than 64 parameters will be auto configured. And that goes for VST, VST3 and also all the units which are unique to Mac, whereas VST and VST3 are on both Mac or both Windows and Mac, I should say, because they're originally just the Windows format, but they work on Mac now these days as well and have for a long time. So I'm going to just show you an example. If I grab the Valhalla Frack Echo here, double click, and I can unfold this here and then I can see it has eight parameters pre-configured and that's all of them that you have here. The same is the case for the audio unit. I noticed with some plugins that what turns up in the parameters might differ between VST, VST3 or audio units. So one example that I found was the Sound Toys Tremulator. So if I add both the audio unit and VST3. VST is a bit outdated these days. You can see here that it has 16 parameters configured for the audio unit and it has 15 for the VST3. What seems to be missing in the VST3 compared to the audio unit is bypass and you can also see that instead you have some drop downs that you don't have here. But for example, if we look at envelope mode, which is this one, you can simply shift this to the different mode settings here. That's just something to be aware of. So not all plugins come auto configured. So one plugin that I found that does not seem to be pre-configured is the audio unit for Nectar 3. I'm going to use that as an example. The way the configuration works is the same for VST3 plugins that do not come pre-configured. And so I'm just going to double click it to edit and then we're going to unfold it. And you see there's nothing here, but it gives you instructions. So it says to add plugin parameters to this panel, click the configure button, which is this one. So we're going to click it. And then we can simply click on the parameters in the plugin to add them down below here. So I'm just going to click on this and you see in this case, two parameters are added automatically. One's the gain and one's the frequency for the band one. I'm going to do the same thing for these here. And you can see it's pretty fast the way you can add them. Do the same here as well. Clicking twice so I turn them off again panning width then input gain output gain I'm going to click on this as well and this and these and then let's say this doesn't do anything this doesn't do anything either Drop downs don't seem to work. So here I can only have this added, but you know, you can see that you can add most things simply by clicking on them and that fairly quickly. And then when you're done configuring, you can just click on this, but I just wanted to show you something that you can also do because I've just basically run through everything really quickly and added everything I could find that could be added, but I might not want to have the order because if the plugin is selected and I have push or another MIDI controller with eight encoders plugged in and turned on, then the first eight parameters 
could be controlled by this controller. And so I might want to reconfigure the order of the parameters. This you can simply do by saying like, okay, I want input gain first, and then output gain next or maybe last. So basically you can just drag and drop the parameters into the order that you want. And once you've done, you can click on configure. What you also can do that you don't have to do this every single time you want to use the plugin that can't, doesn't come pre-configured is you can do a right click or control click on Mac and then choose save as default configuration. If later on, for example, you realize, yeah, the order here is still not right or you forgot to basically configure certain parameters, then you can always go into configure again, add the changes, rearrange the parameters and save as default configuration just again. And it will ask you if you want to overwrite the previous existing one. And that's it. One issue with that whole thing is that it will not save parameter settings if you make changes. I mean, if you change parameter settings within the live set, those will be changed with the live set, but they will not be saved here within the plugin when you drag it in again. And with Nectar 3, so for example, so I've configured this and to show you that it works, I'm gonna grab the audio unit for it again, unfold this and you can see it actually has been saved the way I've set it up. There is an options text command that lets plugins auto-populate more than 64 parameters. The maximum is 128. This does not work for contact libraries. It also doesn't seem to work for quite a lot of native instrument plugins either, but it might be helpful for other plugins. Okay, so let's get to contact the example that I was asked about. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to grab the VST3 so it works for both Windows and Mac. And if I unfold this here, you can see there's nothing here again. And that also doesn't make any sense because a lot of the contact libraries have very different parameters. So even if you configured this and, for example, you know, did the save as default configuration, this wouldn't work for the next contact library. So for example, if I take the giant here and double click that to load it, nothing's mapped. Like if I look at this, this is the parameters that I've got here. If I get rid of this again and say, I'm going to take the aluminum scratches from kinetic metal, there's very different parameters in this one. Let's go back to the giant. So I'm going to double click this. And then we're just going to go through the same configuration thing again quickly. Turn this off. So one thing that is not possible to add is the type of reverb. And of course, when you open contact, it will by default be empty. And to make sure that we have the library that we have now configured accessible over and over and not just within this live set where this will stay unchanged unless we change it later on, then we're going to have to create an instrument rack out of that and save that to the user library. So let's do that. I'm going to close the contact and then we're going to do control on Windows or command on Mac and G to group it into an instrument rack. Click here to show the macro controls and then we're going to click on everything. I find the easiest if you don't want to change the setting at the same time is to click right at the bottom here where the values are shown. Right click control click and then map it to the macros. And as you can see, it takes the name automatically of the control or of the parameter better. And then let's finish this up. And now I've got everything mapped. We could, you know, 
change the colors here as well if you want any colors. We could technically also m map multiple parameters to one macro control if we find this useful. And we can also go here into mapping modes and change the minimum and maximum settings. So for example, if we realize like the amount of space, we don't want it to go all the way up, then we could minimize it here. We could even turn things around. So if I want this on and off, to be switched around, then I could start it with one and go down to zero, for example. Double clicking always takes it back to the default. And once we're happy with the minimum and maximum settings here as well, we can click on map again. And then we can either save it directly as that. So I would then rename this first to say contact the giant. In this case, we only had seven parameters. Of course, these days we have up to 16, so it depends on how many you need. And then another option would be to create variations. So this way we could basically have the library preset with basically its own kind of presets that we can create. So we could say, okay, that's the default. We could rename this with control or command and R and say default. And then we could, for example, change like say, okay, this should be on in this case, dynamic range and so on. Of course, you would dial this in in detail, always playing and making sure everything sounds exactly the way you want it. And then you can click on new and rename that again as well, if you like. There's also the randomization that might be interesting sometimes to see if you get interesting results from that. Because if you click on it, then this will be randomized. You can also exclude macros from randomization or from the variations, which might make sense sometimes. For example, anything to do with volume, you might want to exclude from at least randomization, possibly also from variations if you want to dial that in, for example, when you're playing live. Either way, if you're happy with the way you've set up everything, well, first of all, you can decide what you want to have open if you drag it in again. So for example, let's say we do not need to see this here again. And maybe I haven't made any interesting variations. I'm going to turn this to be hidden again as well. And then we can click here on the floppy disk icon. And since I already named it the way I wanted it, I'm going to keep it, but you can also click in and change it. So by default, it's saved in the user library under presets, instruments, and then instrument rack, but you could also put it in your own dedicated folder, for example. So if I fold this up for now, do a right or control click, create new folder and say contact libraries, then I could go back into presets and drop that here into contact libraries and then you'll have access to it. So if I drag it into a new MIDI track, you see everything is pre-mapped and then this obviously as long as the rack is selected will be controllable either on your push or other MIDI controller that has a control surface and eight encoders. If you have any other topics that you would like me to cover in a future video, let me know in the comments below. That's it. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe if you did. And I'll see you next time. Until then, bye.